Well, hello, I'm Chris, and this is my turn signal flasher and hazard light video. Today, we're going to talk about what this is, how it works. We're going to draw a simple wiring diagram, and then we're going to wire it up to some real lights and a real battery with switches to give you an idea how to troubleshoot or how to add signal lights and hazard lights to pretty much everything. So first of all, these are two new ones from my 1970 Chevelle. They use this two prong type for many years before 70 to many years after. Some cars might still use these. Now these are for these incandescent bulbs with a filament like this. So for some reason, if you bought some LEDs and your flasher's acting up, you gotta get you an electronic flasher. This is gonna make your uh, LEDs blink real fast and you possibly can get pulled over for that. But just let you know your flasher is not bad. You need an electronic. This is mechanical. You need a different flasher. They have them at the auto parts store now. These work for these type of bulbs. Okay, so the reason I'm making this video is because if you're having problems with your turn signals or your hazard lights, you really have to understand how this works so you can effectively test it or test and find the problem. So first of all, these are thermal switches that use the principles of the bimetallic strip. So these aluminum ones that look like this are probably the best you can buy. The aluminum just amplifies the sound of this little mechanical clicking thing. Okay, so the bimetallic strip works by taking a piece of spring steel and a piece of alloy. And whenever they're heated, they bend or contort different. Okay, so just Google bimetallic strip to learn more about it. But what's happening is that little spiral thing is a semiconductor, a resistor, that's heating up and when this metal heats up it's going to flex or contort and when it does it bends and completes that circuit and then it gives it just enough time to cool down going back to its normal shape with the help of the spring steel and it just keeps doing that over and over and over now the only thing connecting these two right now is a super thin you see it's like a little size of a hair right there not the not the obvious one a real thin one Okay, so we're going to draw a quick diagram of this so you just really understand what's going on in here. So when you're talking about it, you know, you impress people. Okay, so the bimetallic strip is two pieces of metal that when, they're, when heat is applied, they're going to do different things. So on this one, it's just using some type of alloy. So the spring steel is going to take a lot more heat. Okay, and you can see the little points right there that are going to get engaged. That's a point. And then this one has a contact point. So power runs in through X, it's going to go through that little tiny wire and it's going to heat up that resistor. So here's a little tiny wire and then it's just fastened over here. Okay, and you see the little tiny wire, it's just kind of fastened right there. So if you got 12 volts coming in here, the resistor is a semiconductor and the way it reduces the voltage down is it releases the excess as heat. That's how resistors work, so it's going to heat this up. Okay, so you turn your signal lights on, power is going through here, heating the resistor up, and as it heats that resistor up, it's going to bend that alloy. And when it bends the alloy, it's going to connect that switch. So now, instead of power going through the resistor, power is going through this and going to Y to your signal lights, okay? And as that power is going through here, it's not going through here. And just that small amount of time for it not to go through there cools that down and the spring steel brings it back up to where it's supposed to be. So heating the resistor, closing the circuit, not heating the resistor, opening. And that's all it's doing over and over and over. So if you're trying to wire some signals up, you're gonna run power straight to X. And I mean, just the basic wiring, you're going to need a single pull double throw switch. So power goes into the center of the switch. Now you got to switch these because when the switch is that way, it's going to send power over here. So for our left to work, we got to wire through our 1157 bulb and then through a 194. And then this is grounded. And over here, the same thing. Okay, now we're going to wire it up in real life, but this is literally the wire diagram to wire up signal lights now to add the hazard we need another flasher you know and you can get power from the same one it don't matter now this switch needs to be a double pole single throw switch it's going to have four 
you're wiring these two. Like that. Okay, so that's the basic wire diagram to add signals and hazards. Just remember they that each flasher can only do about six or seven bulbs. So typically cars have four 1157s and two or three or four 194s. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so this is a tail light harness for 71 or 72 Chevelle. Uh, we got green and yellow for our signal lights. Okay, so we're just going to wire straight into the harness, but of course you would jump into the wiring if you were trying to add signals to something that didn't have them. Okay, so these are just two power wires off the battery and we got to ground the harness right there. That's all we're doing. For the signal lights, we're just using a flasher, running it straight off the battery to X. Using that single pole double throw switch, wiring it straight into the flasher like that. So we got a yellow wire to our right blinker. This is right, so we're gonna wire it to this side. Look for yellow. Okay. So we're just gonna take the top off of one so you can see it working in real life. I'm gonna wire this to X. See all we did? Now when we flick it to the right, it's gonna And then to make our left work, so I couldn't find a double pole single throw, so this is a double pole double throw. So this would be off, hazard lights on, and we're only using these four. Okay, so we got power going to our hazard flasher. Now we're going to split power up and send it to the double pole single throw switch. So both of these are going to go to the center, just like that, off the battery. All right, so like in the wiring diagram, we're just wiring a separate wire from the double poles to each side. It doesn't matter which one. Okay, so let's say we got the signals on and we turn our hazards on. So what it's doing at first is it's just going to connect these two, still sharing the load with the first flasher. So. See the first flasher is doing the work. And when we turn the signals off, it's gonna go back to this flasher right here. See? Okay, and in the car, you just wire more lights into it. It's the same thing. I just really wanna give you an idea how they would be wired in a car so that you know to get your signal lights working first before you start messing with the hazard lights. See how the hazard light just pretty much just jumps in and takes over everything. But it's wired right into your existing signal light wire. Okay, so just making this video in case anybody's, you know, having problems. If you're, you can't really test these without putting a load on it. So you got to wire at least one 1157 bulb. Well, that's what it took me to get these to start flashing. Okay, and you can run up to about six or seven bulbs. Anything you do is just going to change the speed of that and kind of throw it off. And like I said about the LEDs, if you're blinking too flat, too fast, you can possibly get pulled over by the cops. And I actually put some LEDs in a truck I had one time and they did flash too fast. And a lady almost hit me and she rolled down the window screaming at me that I didn't have my signal on. And I actually did, but they were just flashing too fast and she didn't notice it. So that's it for the video. Just wanted to give you a real quick idea on how to wire this stuff up it's super simple but you got to understand how this thing works in order to test it right and how to use it right well that's it for the video if you enjoyed please like and subscribe and thanks for watching